Hello everyone, welcome to Tony Talks. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching me from. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your like. And if you're a new subscriber here, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on our videos. Yes, let's dive in into this. Today's video is going to be right now. Thank you. Till I'll see you in my next video. Stay safe, stay blessed. I love you all. Bye social media blogger was the one who questioned the paternity of this child. Now, the day this um, social media blogger came online to question the paternity of the child, about a week later, we saw him in an interview with someone who is Mobad's sworn enemy, with a friend who Mobad then eventually chucked in the bin because this friend had betrayed him and he had figured this friend out. Who is the friend? Micey. Now, this Micey's girlfriend is the same person who recorded that recording when Mobad was saying certain things to me. Pamini, Sebasti Kusha, Mashekini Koni, now, why was that recording recorded? Now, we know that at one point in Mobad's life, he had what we call a drug-induced psychosis. We believe that Mobad had, you know, like came in contact with drugs from the Malian's place that just did not, his body could not take. And that then automatically pushed him into like having a um, temporary psychosis for a period of time. Now, we also heard, how do I know that he had a drug-induced psychosis? Now, um, Nayamali himself, in an interview or on his page said that Mobad was forgetting his lyrics, he was forgetting the password to his phone, he was forgetting the, the basic things that he uses on a daily basis. Um, he also said that, you know, out of points, what is that psychosis? Sleep, it was, it was paranoid, you know, paranoid. Yes, yeah, he was having paranoia, it was this, it was that. All of this can be drug induced. Now, I don't want to put all of this on drugs alone. I want to I tell the public, why are we after the Malians? Why are we mentioning the Malians? Now, my question is, we have several videos of Naramali being, um, of um, Mobad being bashed. We're not saying Naramali was there on the day that he fired or Naramali was the one who gave him the injection. No, we're saying, why was he beaten so much? We had interviews of Mobad himself saying that, you know, the industry, I have all the recordings if you want me to play them. Mobad saying that, oh, the record label that I was with, they were calling show promoters and they were sabotaging my jobs. Show promoters were not giving me jobs because of the, the industry cabals that I fell out with. That's number one. Secondly, we have at least more than 10 videos of him getting bashed. We have videos of Sam Larry trying to flog him. We've heard that at one time at a Lego ship, they almost lynched him and his wife. His wife said, we were being chased with guns. His wife said, we had to run for our lives. His wife said, even in pregnancy, I had to literally, like there was a time we were coming from, from somewhere and I was, we were being chased. By who? By the industry cabals. This is our questions to the Malians. What did he do so bad? What did he do so wrong that you guys made life hell for him? Mumi made a statement and said, my husband was already dead before his actual fight. Now, let's look at that. What does that mean? It means that this boy had no essence. It means that she said, oh, he couldn't sleep. We know that Mubad was hypertensive. What brought all of these health concerns? All of it is centered around the Malians. So the Malians may not have been there the day within 48 hours of this boy's spy, but we are saying that the Malians have questions to answer. Like when he broke out of the, in, the, the record label, what then happened? What was the issue with Naramali and, and Mobad? Now, what was the issue with um, Samlari and Mobad? Why were they like after him? What did he do? So it's not okay to say, me, I don't know anything about his spy. It's not okay to say that because Nigerians are asking questions. What actually happened? Come out and give us answers. Something must have happened. Now, when Mobad died, first, a few things that just I still cannot comprehend, and this is why I'm against Baba Mobad even asking for DNA in the first place. The first thing is, now your son died. You said as soon as you walked into the house. Now, I'll start from the beginning. Baba Mobad said when his wife called him and said, ah, they said something is wrong with your son, let's go. Baba Mobad said when he met with his wife, he said to, this wife, to the wife, oh, my, there's a cluster. Was it like after money and then he died, or was it that he did something that then led to him, you know, you know, you know, you know, living the world the way he did? Now, when they, when they left and they got to the house, Baba Mobad said when he got to the house, there were over 100 people outside and inside the house. However, as soon as a father, who you already have the hunch, that your son is no more. Get into his house and you see this crowd of people. I think the first thing, like being your kunile wari in particular the wari. So I'd expect that the first thing the father would ask is, where is my son? However, Baba Mobad said, as soon as he got to the house, he left the entire crowd 
outside and inside the house. It left the body of Mobad that was lying just by the staircase because before Baba Mobad could climb the staircase to go upstairs, they, they said Mobad was laid just next to the staircase. So he left the body of his son and he went upstairs into the staircase. When he was asked why he went upstairs, Baba Mobad said, oh, because me and my son, we always meet upstairs. So I went upstairs to look for my son. But you already have a hunch. You already know from the get-go that your son is no more. The moment you got to the son's house, you saw the crowd outside. You could have asked, where is my son? Take me to my son. However, he didn't ask. He walked in and he went upstairs into the bedroom upstairs. Now, we know, we cannot confirm this, but, you know, we've heard that... Um, the day that Mobad died, all of his jewelry got missing, including that of his wife. And all of these things are kept in it. It's mere speculations. We do not know. Now, after that happened, they did all the, you know, walking and here and there, take him here, take him there, and they did all of that. My second question to the general public, the people who are like trying to nail with me so bad, is Mobad is six foot two. However, <laughs> Forced into a 511 casket, and we have questioned why you all are shouting DNA, DNA. Why are you not questioning who broke Mobad's neck? Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Daddy Freeze, okay? we know the composition stages. We know that when someone dies, there's a certain hours the body freeze, um, the body gets for um stiffened. We yes, know when the body begins called the rigor mortis. The rigor mortis stage. Thank you. Now, when um, so Mobad was, according to Baba, he was in the mortuary the night before the morning, and then it was put in a casket and taken to um, Ikorudu to bury him. However, the casket that was given to Mobad is under, undersized, and we have asked, who broke Mobad's neck? Now, when we all saw that video, it threw us all off balance. I feel like every parent that saw that video, that sight of Mobad, the day that he was being buried, would have shed a tear or two. So when we saw that, we then began to question who was there. And we called out someone called Darosha. Darosha is Mobad's cousin, um, is Mobad's mother's younger brother, um, who is also a CEO or something. I don't know. He's also part of his uh, Mobad's team. So when we started calling Darosha out, because then Baba Mobad said when um, the widow gave them two million naira, it was Darosha who he handed the, mon the money to and then all of that whole about. Anyway, so we then questioned, Darosha, you are the Baba Isinku. First of all, when Mobad died, Baba Mobad came out with this narrative of they embalmed my son before without me, without me knowing. They embalmed my son without my knowledge. Who embalmed the son? Darosha, not even me. She's only 25. That was all Darosha's doing. Now, after that, we then questioned, Darosha, you were the one who uh, embalmed this boy locally. Um, you were the one who they gave the two million era to, to take care of the burial. What happened? After you took Mobad's body to the march to the mob, what then Kilo Shelley from there? And then in one of Darusha's updates, I have it. Um, Darusha then said, the entire family were there when we put him in the casket, and they did not have a problem with it. Darusha said, the only person that wasn't there is Mobad's mom. And from our investigation, we also know that Mumi wasn't there. So it means that Baba Mobad would have been there or would have seen him in the casket like that. That's number one. Baba Mubad to this date has not debunked that. Secondly, who gave him that white cloth that he wore? Who made that cloth? We need to know. Now, that the freeze, after they buried Mubad and we all saw that soul site and the world who started crying. Who dressed him up, they right? say? Pardon? Who dressed him up? We still do not know the case. We're just going by speculations. We still do not know who dressed him up and who broke his neck. Now, when an interview was carried out at Baba Mubad's house, some of the people who went with their phones and cameras, they then asked, Baba Mubad, how come? What happened to your son's neck? Baba Mobad's girlfriend or his wife, Iyalola Day, we have the video. Iyalola Day then said, eh, kosin kokoto she, I want pastor Walonfi anointing oil. Anointing oil then became sledge armor that broke Mobad's neck. Because she said, I want pastor Walonfi anointing oil. Silon run, on rinye wa lo segbe. La run, it's the first thing. Pastor Lofi anointing oil. Silon run, anointing oil. On rinye wa she segbe. So really, and the guy who did the casket, they called Heavenly Casket or something like that. The guy wrote a statement and said, when we went to his from his page and like we called him out, like, why did you give Mobad a 511 casket? Why did you give him an undersized casket? He then said, Well, I told the parents that this is the size that we have on ground, and they were happy with it. He said that in his comment section. So in your lobe, number one, you're asking for a DNA, but you haven't still till today, you haven't told us who carried that act, who broke his neck. That aside, Baba Mobad has been going to several bloggers, 
to solicit for fund because of course I'm already cool and they are saying oh because mobile will share what mobile didn't do we will do will fulfill all of mobile's responsibilities to you and all of that which is fair enough it's fine like we're not saying that of course women has people who are supporting her we also think about mobile also needs support because all of my is just lost the child mobile 27 years is no joke so I we honestly do sympathize with him however we feel like these people who claim to be Baba Mubad supporters are the reason we're here we are now. They've seen that this man is greedy and they're feeding into that greed. Now, why did Wumi call out for help? Daddy Freeze, this is not the first time that Wumi, Wumi's son has been cursed. Let me tell you the despicable things that have been said. One of it is that they should put Liam under a truck. They put a chair to stop the car from moving and the car should just drive on top of him and just spy the boy. Uh -uh. I have the recording here. I know it's a bit, it's too much. If you guys want to hear it, I'm happy to play. There's another one where they said, eh, well, like, they swear to God, they swear to God, this boy will not reach the age of one. Why? Because they said, oh, because it's because of this boy, they, they buy more bad. They've given, they've not given this boy a child, uh, a father at all. They've given him about five fathers. One, they said, is one of um, Mubad's friend. They said, is, is Sam Larry. They said it's Obai Legoshi. They said it's this. They said it's that. All of this. All, why are they doing this? And who are the people doing this? These are Baba Mubad supporters. These are the same people who have used their platform to, to, to raise funds for Baba Mubad. These are people who Baba Mubad has called on their show. So Baba Mubad knows about these things. One of Baba Mubad's bloggers, while all of this was going on, said, because I am Mubad's younger brother, Adura, chose to stand by Wumi. He lived with Wumi in that house. Wumi is not good, is not good, but she allowed her younger brother to live with her. Wumi Oda, Wumi Oda, she let her husband's friends live with them. There were more than 10 people living in that house. And Wumi said, this is the first time myself and Mubad are actually having a home, a place we can call our home. We've never had a home. We've had to go from pillar to post. We've had to sleep from here to here for 10 good years. For 10 good years. Now, while Baba Mubad was doing all of this and Adura chose to stand by his, brother, his late brother's child, Baba Mubad, one of Baba Mubad's blogger then came online and said, well, Baba Mubad actually would be happy if it was you, Adura, that guy, and not Mubad. And please, you guys, make it make sense. How are you supporting someone? And you're coming online to say, this same blogger has cursed Baba, uh, yeah, Mubad's mother severally, cursed um, Adura severally. This blogger is constantly, constantly bashing women on social media. They've called out all sorts of names. These are the people pushing the, this narrative. And you need to come and see them on TikTok. I, I know that social media is toxic. I know that we, we people can be like, we can be a lot and we can make things up. But I like, you really need to see the kind of hate that these people are pushing on this young girl. And what has she done? Why is she quiet? Why hasn't she done the DNA? Let me go to the DNA part. It's very easy, but one thing that I said from the beginning, I said, Baba got it wrong, and I blame Mubad's friends, his, his frenemies, and I blame social media. Why? If when this happened, Baba Mubad picked this girl and the son and put them on a round table, Otishele, Otishele, Mubad is cool, but Omoku, Mubad is gone, but at least his son is here. He's left himself. What Mubad could not do, you, his wife, you, his son, I believe that you guys are enough for me. What are we going to do? Come to the round table and discuss justice. What do you know about the Malians? This bear in mind that the moment Mubad died, in less than 24 hours, Baba Mubad came on and said, Hey, I'm a Malian scholar, but I won't say I do honey. Baba Mubad, why do you feel the need to come out and defend the people who bashed your son for two years? You should have just kept quiet. All Mumi said was they've killed this, they've fired this nigga. Mumi Lomo and Kotori Tofini, they fired this nigga. Do you get what I mean? So then what we then said was, why was but why did Baba Mubad actually feel the need to come online to do that. Okay, call out a round table. Mio, what has happened has happened. It's our loss. It's painful. And I know that you've been a younger, but I'm here for you. I'll support you. I'll do everything. However, this DNA issue that they're talking about, or coming, let's just do it to just give the public and so that they can take this off so that this DNA issue does not like now, like coming in now, come and disrupt this justice process. We need justice. We need to get answers for what Pai Mubad. Baba did not do that. So he took it to public. He brought it to public. He came public to bash her and say, oh, she, she, she spikes Mobad's noodles and Mobad will sleep and she will go out and sleep. What are you suggesting? You're saying she's promiscuous. You're saying she sleeps around. He said, she's the uh, Anolo show. My son never married her. Baba even went as far as saying, yes, my son did not name, name him Liam because Liam is an Islamic name. Liam is not an Islamic name. It's an Irish name. And all of this, Baba did that. So when this happened, let me also, I'm going to talk about 
um, the, the DNA and the Falanus. Now, before Mubad died, he had, before he died, he had gone to the Falanus to explain everything happening with him with the industry cabals. The Falanus have already said, okay, we're going to help you get all your realities and we'll get you to resolve this drama. However, the next appointment that was booked for Mubad to see the Falanus, he probably didn't attend. So as soon as Mubad died and Mubad and Mumi then saw that Baba was already going to public to push this narrative and making this whole thing about her, she then ran to the Falanus and they then said, okay, we'll take up this case on behalf of your family, not on behalf of Mumi, on behalf of the Fal family. The Falanus released a statement and said they reached out to Baba to say, Baba, we want to take on your case pro bono. We are going to represent your family. I'm going to help you get justice. Baba didn't want that. Baba said he wanted his own um, lawyers or didn't even, like, whatever that is. Now, as soon as that happened, um, the Falanos then said, okay, well, fine. We will then represent the wife and the child. Because of this, they've bashed the Falanos. I just want to say massive thank you to the Falanos because the way they've dent, they've, like, thrown dirt on this man's name is enough for him to say, you know what? But he's standing by this young widow because, to be honest, he has no one. And the people who are supporting Baba Mumbad are way more than the people supporting Omi. So now, as, since Baba has refused this support from this legal team, they're like, okay, we're going to stand by the wife and the child. And then Baba is on social media doing all of these things. And then people are here pushing this narrative of Wumi Lok Pai, Wumi Lok Pai, Wumi DNA, Wumi DNA, DNA is a must, DNA is a must. They now said, okay. Because the way they've gone about asking for the DNA has now become defamatory to Wumi's person. We're going to do the DNA, but Baba himself has to do the DNA. Baba has to provide, make arrangements for the DNA to be done at three different locations. And that's what we're waiting for. Now, since this, is this statement was issued by the Falanos, Baba, till this very moment, has not done anything. We know that, according to the Child Rights Act in Nigeria, it is only the father who has the right to request for a DNA. Now, in the absence of the father, there's a legal process you go through. The people are saying, hey, we Nigerians are asking for a DNA. You Nigerians have no right to ask for a DNA. Even the Nigerian police have no right. If they have to request a DNA, they have to go through legal process. You have to go and get a court order for her to do a DNA. It's not enough to say, it's easy now. We may just take the child and go and do a, do, do a DNA. It's not done like that, especially with somebody who you people are bashing, with someone who you people have spewed so much hate on. She doesn't even, she can't even go out. On the 31st, she couldn't even go to church. She went to church and she had to run back home. So when you're saying, go and do DNA, do we know how many of you are in the public that have, you know, bashed women and that she just doesn't feel safe to go out? Anyway, now we've gotten to this point. You want to do a DNA. Baba, go and get a court order. One of Baba's supporters, I don't know her name, um, someone from TikTok, they went to court. They made an arrangement with Baba to meet Baba in court. The lawyer got to court just to go and get the court order. They started calling Baba Mubad. They called him more than 100 times. Baba Mubad did not pick up. They said, Baba, you don't have to pay. They are saying it's a court order that is stopping me from doing a DNA. We are here to pay for the court order. Baba, meet us in court. They got to court. They called Baba Mubad over a million times. Baba Mubad did not answer. This same supporter of Baba Mubad came online to come and rake. That, ah, ah, Baba, what do you mean? You, you know, you said, they said it's a court order that will give us the DNA. Let's do the DNA. Mumi said, even up till now, she hasn't heard anything from Baba Mubad. So it's like, Baba Mubad is doing this in public to gain public sympathy and to extort the public. Because honestly, right now, it's becoming extortion. If you're coming to public to ask people to help me, help me, help me, while we Nigerians, and I will never understand Nigerians, you're all about Baba Mubad. If this boy, this little um, nine-month-old boy or six-month-old boy, if really this boy is Mubad's son, I don't want to say shame on us, but we are failing Mubad a second time. When he was being beaten and bashed and all of that, we could not lend him our voice. We could not come online to speak for him. He was saying all of this in his lyrics. He was saying, if you kill me, you don't have to kill me before you leave. You don't have to do this before you do this. Yeah. It, Mubad, you, don't have to me, huh? you don't have to cry me. He was saying this in his lyrics. He was calling for help. This boy cried for help. We did not hear him. He granted interviews and he repeated the same things he was saying in his lyrics and we did not hear him. And now we are here. We're all going to sit back and watch this injustice happen to his son. They, I'm just going to play you just one recording where they said that Omoy, they will actually buy Omoy. I just want to play just this one. I won't play mm. two. I'll play just this one. I Okay. 
So this I have we have I have at least six or seven of these videos. I have at least six or seven of that video. That's just one out of many. That's one out of so many of these videos. And then I ask Nigerians, is the DNA if the DNA comes out and this boy is Mobad's son, would it would that result now tell you what's Pi Mobad? Even the police in their statement have already tagged this thing to be medical negligence. Now that if he's asked, oh yes, we're going to fault Mobad for his spy because you know he himself. That if he's why was Mobad scared of the clinic, of the hospital, of going to? It's because, like we said, he already had this paranoia, and his wife said that he believed the Malians are everywhere. In his head, the Malians are everywhere. The Malians are watching him, so he wouldn't even go to the hospital. He even did that. With with his wife. She was pregnant and he wouldn't let her go to the hospital. She had to use um, a, um, a, lab, a local, you know, um, maternity, whatever they call them. Because he was scared. For him, the Malians are everywhere. He said that he went to, um, the, the, to the, the, the doctors or something at one point and they refused to treat him. And in his head, okay, it's the Malians who have said the doctors cannot treat me. Because he, was, he had already, his head was already messed up. So there's so many things. You know, with all of with saying DNA, did, did, Bumi would have done the DNA if Baba did it the right way. But right now, Bumi is scared. It's not easy to say, I take the baby to Baba Mubad and, and go and do the DNA. That's, the result could be manipulated because we already know the only reason Baba is doing this is because Baba doesn't want the son or the wife to get, you know, most of this boy's um, wealth. Because Baba already thinks in his head that, oh, Bumi would then want to sit on everything. And she's not even a greedy person. Oh, more bear. Eh? It is not even that. She's not, she, 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 at, the, at no point. In in majority of the interactions that I've heard people have with me, she said, I don't even want, if they don't, I don't need it. I just want justice for my husband. And I'm, I want to just give a shout out to the guy who, um, to the guy who, who's, whose voice was in this video, because this guy was also going by the things that he's heard on social media, by the, the hate that they spewed on him. And this guy made a bold step because the, the conversation Osha played earlier was between this guy, Mumi, and somebody else. And this guy then said, oh, I'm sorry that you had to go through this. Like, I didn't what? know this part. And the reason people are really... Abu Abuibel and Ayat. So it's the Ayat guy who then said, oh, Maku, Otaya, Makpai, and all of that. But the guy then stepped forward and said, I'm sorry that you had to go through this. The reason you're being nailed and people are saying this about it is because you've not come online to tell your side of the story. Why hasn't Wumi come online? She will be in contempt of court. People are saying, oh, the case is not in court yet. What is corona inquest? It's when they go and make inquiry, look into the case. When they look into that case, they will form an opinion and decide if this case then has to proceed to court. In this moment, Wumi cannot come online to tell you people, give you people a timeline. Is Wumi a suspect? No, she's not a suspect. However, she's a witness to the, to, um, to the situation. How is she a witness? She is the only one that can give us a timeline of events. We went to the, to the show. This happened. They fought. We left the show. We got home. And then when we got home, this happened, this happened, that happened. Only then can we now form an informed uh, opinion on what has happened. Only then can the police and the state or whatever do a root cause analysis. From what she said, this is what we think has happened. This is what we think has happened. And then we can now come up and they can do their investigation and all that. But in my own honest opinion, I honestly think we are doing injustice to Mobat's child, most importantly. It's the child for me and it's the wife for me. She's only 25. Nigerians just like think, do your due diligence. Everything, all the answers you need are there on social media. TikTok is not Facebook, it's not Instagram. On TikTok, if you go and type Wumi Mobad, you will see millions of videos. You will see lies and you will see truth. Do your due diligence. Gather facts. Don't go by, oh, one, of, one person I like, one blogger I like is saying this, then that's the truth. Like, we need to think. You need to critically analyze things. When somebody says that thing is water, you have to check. Is it water? Do you have to put it in your mouth first to know if it's water or not? By looking at it, you can tell, okay, this substance looks like water. The NGLA issue is another one. Mobat said, they gave me a substance to drink. He said, when we were arrested, I was the only one that they let go. He said, but before they let me go, they gave me a substance to drink. He said, but and since I drank that thing, I've not been myself again. He said, they left Zeno and the rest, but I was the only one that, that was asked to go. And he wrote a petition. Is that true? Where are the officers that attended Mobat's property? The officers that arrested Mobat. The officers that went there, we saw his wife standing in, fr in front of cross and saying, kill me before you take my husband, I have to know where you're taking him or you kill me. Where, is, where are those officers that arrested Mobad? They need to come out and give us a statement. They need to come and say, yes, we arrested him. He was given this substance or he wasn't given this substance. Till date, we have not heard anything from the NDLE. 
They've only said, yeah, we're looking into this. We don't know this. We don't know. But nothing is being said. So uh, will it be a lie to say this is also the work of the industry cabals? Or are the NDLA is also trying to cover up something? There's a video of Mobad crying and saying, they did this to me. The NDLA did this. So everyone should be held accountable. What do you know about this case? You have to come forward and say it. So we're not saying that the Malias are the ones who buy Mobad like, you know, they were there for the eight hours or 72 hours before Mobad Pai. But we are saying that what happened, the two years that you guys, you know, you know, you know, tortured this guy, what did he do to deserve that? What exactly happened? Why were you sabotaging his job? And why were you calling promoters and telling them not to give him job? This is the questions we have to the Malians. Not like people say, hey, so they, they've been exonerated now because they were not there 72 hours leading to his spy. No. So that's like a very quick like analysis i know people are saying oh yeah you're talking so much yes i'll talk a lot because we're talking about someone here we're talking about somebody who could be lynched just last week with me cried for help and said people are monitoring me people are watching me i saw a car outside my house you know people are like you know i, I don't feel safe this is what we nigerians have done it is all on us if we could not protect mobad we could we, now we cannot protect his wife and his child when people come online to defend me then oh yes they are like the same and i'll say this i said this again because for me I cannot relate to a woman crying her husband. Why? I cannot relate to it. So it's, I, I cannot buy it. I cannot understand it that Mumi has a hand with, in what fire her husband. Because it, that, that, my, <laughs> my belief is that anyone that thinks that, perhaps it is what they can do themselves. That's why uh, they feel it's normal for someone else to do that. Because or it is normal to accuse someone of doing that. Mm. You know? So it's, it is really, because how did we move from the injected, in, a sustained injury to me being the fire? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, guys. Uh, I want to just ask one more question from the public and then, because okay. it's a very emotionally charged uh, topic. Um, I'm glad you ladies were able to share your opinions. Thank you. Uh, I'm also, I'm also glad that even though this matter seems like it's quieting Never down, <laughs> people still have Mubad uh, in their uh, in their hearts. Those of you watching on TikTok, double click the screen, pop my money, Gonzo, St. Joe's. Uh -huh. So uh, maybe we should round off if there's nobody else who wants to say anything. If there's nobody else who wants to say anything, we could just round off. All right, Dad Dufis, thank you so much for having us. We're you are really most pleased. welcome. You are most yeah. welcome. Oh. And uh, we'll continue to monitor. Okay. Okay. All right. You, you have a comment you want to make? Oh, yes. Uh, well... <laughs> Well, uh, I've actually said a lot, and uh, everybody has said a lot. Well, thank you, ladies. Yeah, you've done so well. And uh, really, it's so pathetic that we are still dragging this uh, issue all this way. Uh, but something, there's something I, I observed when this thing, the, this whole thing started. Women were being supported in every angle. Everybody loves her. In fact, a lot of people were cursing. Mobile's father, they were really caught, especially this guy was coughing Mobile's father even till tomorrow. So they supported Wumi, they never dragged her or anything. But as time goes on, when uh, the results, uh, whichever, didn't come out in time, and then uh, Mobile's dad went to Brekete and they stated some things that, like, because I heard this, the, I, I think I watched the show when he said, uh, when Liam was born and uh, the the, the placenta was just given time. to him and uh, you know things like that and then since then he started suspecting was he the owner of the uh, was his son <laughs> a, a real biological father and things like that so that he insisted for dna well to me actually i was i i think i was one of those who were actually against the dna why would you do dna for what reason mm. uh however as time goes on um the dna actually it's not a bad thing to me if i would say i understand that that's a uh, that, that, that it, it, that's a legal process you need to go through to be able to do the dna because the the the, the father who was supposed to be the only person who should act for the dna is no more however 
Moba's father, I would say, probably is not capable to get those terms ready. And uh, just like somebody have just said, a, a guy, one of one man that you had. They said, we well, could just do the DNA test anywhere and just post it. Either you believe it or you don't believe it. It's your headache. Like you could just do the DNA test and say, okay, this is my DNA and that is it. And that this issue won't be because it's a lot of stress for a 25 year old girl with a six month old baby. Like I can't even relate. I, I can imagine what she's really going through. But if I were like, if, if I'm to say, I would, I would just suggest that the DNA done. You don't, nobody needs to witness it. Just do it in your own private and then post it for the world. Because see, this is Nigeria. I live in the UK, but but, but I'm still in Nigeria and we know how we operate. They just want to, what is, like technically say, whatever they say, yes, it's yes. Nobody wants to think. And it will save you, you me a lot of stress. Just do the DNA and post it for the world to see. That's it. If they like, believe it. If they like, don't believe it. So it will save her a lot of stress while we are waiting for the real causes of Mumbai. My, you understand? So that's what I would say. But really, I want to again thank you guys and you ladies really for supporting with me this much. And you see, honestly, it's only God that can really reward you. Thank you very thank much you. for bringing.